Greetings, my cosmic explorers. I'm May Tobol, your guide to the mysteries of the universe. Welcome back to my blog, where science meets attitude and wonder knows no bounds. Today, we're diving into the most complex and mysterious object in the known universe, the human brain. Get ready for a mind-bending journey through neurons, evolution, and the stars, because your brain is far more cosmic than you've ever imagined. To help us break it all down, I've brought along the brilliant Brian. So grab your coffee, fasten your seatbelts, and get ready for some serious celestial wisdom. Brian, the floor is yours. Thanks, May. I'll do my best to guide us through this thought-provoking topic. Let's explore the dreamscape together. We like to think our brain is special, the crown jewel of evolution, but what if it's just ordinary? Not in the boring sense, but in the sense that it's not fundamentally different from other animal brains. It's just that somewhere along the line, a few lucky mutations gave us a little extra oomph. And that extra is what makes us write poetry, build rockets, and obsess over cat videos. Evolution didn't wake up one day and say, let's build the ultimate thinking machine. It was more like, Hey, this primate brain is working okay. Let's add a few upgrades, see what happens. And somehow, it worked. We got language, art, and TikTok, but we're not the only smart ones. Dolphins have complex social structures and sing elaborate songs. Elephants mourn their dead. Crows solve puzzles. So why are we the ones building spaceships? Because our brain didn't just get bigger, it got more connected. That's where the magic lies. Not in the number of neurons, not in the size, but in the connections. And those connections, they're the real secret to our cosmic leap. Dolphins are not shy. They're open about their sex lives in a way that would make even the most progressive humans blush. And they do it not just for reproduction, but for fun. They experiment with positions, partner up in threes, and generally treat sex like a social activity. This isn't just about pleasure, it's about connection. Dolphins live in tight-knit communities, and sex is part of their social glue. It's how they bond, how they negotiate hierarchy, how they say, hey, I'm cool with you. So why don't we talk about this more? Maybe because it makes us a little uncomfortable to think that our closest relatives in intelligence also have the most adventurous sex lives. Or maybe we're just jealous. We like to believe our brain is the pinnacle of evolution. But according to neuroscientists, we're not that special. Our brain is essentially a larger, more complex version of a primate brain. We didn't evolve from scratch. We built on what was already there. And it's not the number of neurons that makes us unique. It's how those neurons are wired. The human brain has about 90 billion neurons. Impressive, but not the most in the animal kingdom. Elephants have more, so do whales. But we have something they don't. A dense, dynamic network of connections that allows for abstract thought, creativity, and the ability to imagine things that don't exist. So maybe the secret isn't the brain itself, but the way it's connected. If you want to count neurons, you're in for a messy job. Scientists literally turn brains into soup. They take a brain, slice it up, dissolve it into a liquid, and then use special markers to distinguish neurons from other brain cells like glial cells. It's like making a smoothie, but instead of fruit, you use brain matter. And instead of a blender, you use enzymes. The result? A liquid suspension where you can count the number of neurons under a microscope. It's not glamorous, but it works. And what we've found is that the number of neurons alone doesn't explain intelligence. It's the connections between them that matter. Each neuron can connect to thousands of others, creating a network so complex it's almost impossible to comprehend. There's a special type of neuron found in humans and some other highly social animals like whales, elephants and apes. They're called von Economo neurons and they're long spindle-shaped cells that connect distant parts of the brain, especially the frontal and parietal lobes. These neurons are believed to play a role in fast, intuitive decision-making, empathy and social awareness. They might be the reason we can instantly read someone's emotions or make snap decisions in high-stress situations. They're not unique to humans, but we have more of them, and that might be the key to our advanced social skills. The human brain has about 90 billion neurons. Each of those neurons can connect to thousands of others, creating around 450 trillion synapses. That's a lot. But the universe? It's got us beat. There are an estimated 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Each galaxy contains hundreds of billions of stars. 
That's more than all the neurons in every human brain on Earth combined. But here's the twist. Both the brain and the universe are built from networks. In the brain, neurons communicate via synapses. In the cosmos, galaxies are connected by gravity. Both systems evolve through emergence, complex behaviors arising from simple interactions. So maybe the brain isn't just a biological organ, maybe it's a cosmic structure in its own right. In theory, perpetual motion machines are impossible. They violate the laws of thermodynamics. But the human brain comes close. It runs on about 20% of the body's energy, mostly glucose and oxygen, and it never really shuts down. Even when you're asleep, your brain is busy consolidating memories, regulating bodily functions, and dreaming up weird scenarios involving flying and falling. The brain is like a 24 sevenths factory. It's always processing, always thinking, always active. And unlike most machines, it doesn't wear out from use. In fact, the more you use it, the better it works. So while it's not truly perpetual, it's pretty damn close. The brain and the universe are eerily similar. Both are networks. Both evolve through emergence. Both are governed by rules that aren't obvious from looking at individual components. In the brain, neurons form clusters and pathways. In the cosmos, galaxies form filaments and voids. Both systems rely on connections, not just individual nodes. And both systems are self-organizing. They don't need a central controller. They grow, adapt, and change based on internal and external signals. It's like the universe is thinking through us. And maybe in a way it is. Whale songs are more than just beautiful sounds. They're complex, structured, and possibly even a form of language. Humpback whales, for example, compose songs that evolve over time with new verses added each season. And here's the kicker. Whale songs were included on the Voyager Golden Record, the message we sent into space in hopes of communicating with alien life. We don't know if whales are trying to talk to aliens or if aliens are already listening. But the idea that our oceans might be broadcasting messages to the stars is pretty wild. Artificial intelligence is helping us crack the code of animal communication. From decoding dolphin clicks to understanding bird calls, AI is giving us a new window into the minds of animals. We're starting to realize that many animals have complex communication systems, just not in the way we expect. Dogs, for example, use body language and vocalizations to express emotions. Bees do a waggle dance to tell each other where food is. And with AI, we're getting closer to understanding these languages, not just interpreting them, but translating them. The brain isn't just one big network. It's a collection of specialized networks, each handling different tasks. Some are hardwired from birth, like the networks that control breathing and heartbeat. Others are learned through experience, and here's the kicker you can train your brain to develop new networks. Learning a new skill, for example, strengthens certain neural pathways. It's like building roads in your mind. Each new road makes travel faster and more efficient. And just like roads, some connections get used more than others. The ones that aren't used often get pruned away by the brain's cleanup crew, microglia. Bees have brains the size of a sesame seed. But don't let the size fool you. These tiny brains handle complex tasks like navigation, communication, and memory. Bees use a waggle dance to tell each other where food is. They recognize human faces. They solve problems. And they do all this with fewer than a million neurons. So how do they do it? Their brains are wired for efficiency. Every neuron is packed with information processing power. And unlike our brains, which learn slowly, bees have built-in programs that let them function from birth. It's like having a pre-installed operating system, no updates needed, in a tiny worm called Sanorhabditis elegans. Two special neurons decide whether the worm eats or mates. These neurons constantly monitor the worm's internal state, how much food it's had, how much energy it has. When food is plentiful, the worm mates. When food is scarce, it focuses on survival. It's a simple system, but it reveals something profound. Even the most basic decisions are governed by neural networks. And in humans, those networks are just more complex. If the brain is a network of neurons and the cosmos is a network of galaxies, then maybe both are governed by the same principles. In the brain, signals travel along synapses. In the cosmos, galaxies are connected by gravity. Both systems rely on communication, whether it's chemical signals or gravitational pull. 
and both systems evolve over time. Just as the brain rewires itself based on experience, the universe reshapes itself through cosmic evolution. It's like the universe is thinking through us. Yes and no. The eye develops from the same tissue as the brain. It's essentially an extension of the brain pushed out to the edge of the skull to gather information. Inside the eye, light is converted into electrical signals. Those signals travel through the optic nerve to the brain where they're processed into images. And it's not just about seeing. The eye also plays a role in regulating circadian rhythms, controlling pupil size, and even influencing mood. So the next time you look in the mirror, remember, your eyes are just the brain's spy cameras. We don't see the world as pixels, we see lines, edges and shapes, and we do it fast. Specialized neurons in the visual cortex detect orientation. Horizontal lines, vertical lines, diagonals. These neurons fire in patterns that help us recognize objects even when they're partially hidden. It's like a puzzle. Our brain fills in the gaps using past experience to make sense of what we're seeing. And that's why optical illusions work. Our brain is trying to make sense of something that doesn't quite fit the rules. The brain is like a multi-channel observatory. It gathers data from different senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, taste, and combines them into a single coherent picture. It's not just about input, it's about synthesis. The brain takes raw data and transforms it into meaning. This ability to integrate information is the foundation of language, memory, and consciousness. It's what lets us say the word orange and instantly picture the color, the shape, the taste. And it's what makes us uniquely human. The brain is not immune to decay as we age, Connections between neurons weaken. Unused synapses get pruned by microglia, the brain's cleanup crew. And when those connections break down, we lose abilities. Memory fades, movement slows, thought becomes sluggish. But it's not inevitable. The brain can adapt, rewire, and even heal, given the right conditions. The key, keep using it, keep learning, keep connecting. Some people have extraordinary abilities, perfect pitch, photographic memory, mathematical genius. And while these skills might seem superhuman, they're not magic. They're the result of intense training, early specialization, and sometimes unique brain structures. Take Einstein's brain. It had an unusually large parietal lobe, responsible for spatial reasoning and mathematical thought. And it had more inhibitory neurons, which might have helped him filter out distractions and focus deeply. So superhuman abilities, they're real, but they come from hard work, not genetics alone. Schizophrenia is a mystery. It's not caused by a single gene or a simple chemical imbalance. It's a complex disorder that likely involves disruptions in neural networks. In people with schizophrenia, the brain's internal signals sometimes override external ones, voices that aren't there, thoughts that loop endlessly, reality becomes distorted. Some researchers believe schizophrenia is the price of our evolutionary leap. As our brains became more complex, they also became more vulnerable. After Einstein's death, his brain was removed without permission. For decades, it was kept in a box in a doctor's garage. When scientists finally got a look, they found something unusual an enhanced parietal lobe and an unusually high number of inhibitory neurons. It wasn't just bigger, it was wired differently. Einstein's brain wasn't just smart, it was optimized for deep focus and abstract thought. A perfect brain for physics. Want a better brain? Use it. Learn new things. Challenge yourself. Stay curious. The brain thrives on novelty. It's like a muscle. It grows stronger with use. So read, write, talk, explore. Keep your brain hungry and avoid the mental equivalent of junk food, mindless scrolling, passive entertainment. Feed it something real. We used to think neurons were the basic unit of brain activity, but now we know it's the synapse, the connection between neurons. Each synapse is a point of communication, and with trillions of them, the brain is constantly buzzing with activity. It's not the neuron that matters most, it's the conversation between neurons. Complex thoughts don't just appear out of nowhere. They're built from simpler ideas stitched together in neural loops. A thought is like a song. It starts with a note, then builds into a melody. It loops, evolves, and sometimes spirals into something entirely new. And just like music, thoughts can be composed, deconstructed, and replayed. Elon Musk's Neuralink aims to connect the brain to computers. But reading thoughts is still science fiction. The brain doesn't speak in code. It speaks in patterns. Patterns that are hard to decode, even with advanced AI, but the future is coming, and when it does, the line between human and machine might blur. Memory isn't stored in a single place. It's distributed across the brain, in networks, in patterns. When we remember something, we're not just recalling a file. 
we're rebuilding it from fragments using context and emotion to fill in the gaps. And every time we recall a memory, we change it slightly. Memory is not a recording. It's a story we tell ourselves. Life on Earth began four billion years ago. Creating a cell was harder than creating a brain. Evolution took three billion years to build a cell and just one billion to build a thinking brain. The brain evolved from simpler systems, like the networks that regulate breathing and movement. And once it evolved, it started building models of the world. That's where consciousness began. We assume intelligence looks like us. But what if it doesn't? Alien intelligence could be based on silicon, not carbon. It could be a swarm of nanobots or a living star. We don't know what we're looking for, but if we ever find it, we might not even recognize it. Life on Earth is like winning a royal flush in poker. The odds are astronomical, but someone had to win. Our planet got lucky. The right conditions, the right chemistry, the right timing, and here we are, thinking, feeling, wondering if we're alone. One, how to build a super brain. Want a super brain, you've got one. It's just not optimized. To build a super brain, you'd need to enhance neural efficiency, strengthen connections, and reduce noise. But it's not just about biology, it's about tools. Language, writing, computers, all extensions of the human brain. So maybe the, the real super brain is already here. It's just made of neurons, silicon, and code. Drugs change the brain. Some enhance perception, others distort reality. Psychedelics flood the brain with sensory input, creating vivid hallucinations. Stimulants boost dopamine, making users hyper-focused and energetic, but the cost can be high. Addiction, mental health issues, even psychosis. The brain is powerful, but it's also fragile. No two brains are alike. Some are wired for creativity, others for logic, some for empathy, others for survival. And that diversity is what makes us human. We're not all the same. We're not supposed to be. And that's the beauty of it. And there you have it, my galactic pals. If you love this episode, show us some love with a like, hit subscribe for more interstellar insights, and drop a comment telling us what resonated most with you. Until next time, stay bold, stay bright, and keep reaching for the stars. <laughs>